What's up, friends? Did I blend up enough? Ooh, I don't know. Today, we're taking a look at the new-ish ColourPop Good Sport Eyeshadow Palette, as well as their Crush On You Super Shock Highlighter Palette and one of their Luxe Lipsticks. This is in a whole collection. I just picked up three items because I didn't want to get crazy. Today, I believe their Disney Designer Collection is launching. I feel behind, and I'm sorry about that, but this is when I can get to the uh, Good Sport Eyeshadow Palette, so you know doing what I can. We'll take a look at swatches from both the eyeshadow palette as well as the Super Shock Highlighter one, put some lipstick on, and take it from there. If you want to see all that happen, then please keep on watching. Now, the official name for this collection is their Fall Edit. They have the whole set online. I'm looking on the website right now. The whole set is still currently on sale for $100. They knocked off $11. The Good Sport Eyeshadow Palette retails for $16. You're getting 12 eyeshadows at 1 gram each or 0.04 ounces each. And the expiration shelf life on this bad boy is what? Interesting. I can't find it on here. I'm going to assume 18 months. That's pretty much the average with a lot of eyeshadow palettes nowadays give or take a few ranging anywhere from 12 to 24 i think color pops eyeshadow palettes usually run at 18 months here is the box and i mentioned this in another video i think it was a get ready with me that i am a lisa frank fan being a 90s baby with all the colorful patterns and remember the colorful cheetah i miss you and of course when i saw this packaging it spoke to me in a very deep way and i didn't need this palette absolutely not and all my nonsense i went on about not spending money on middle range makeup and blah blah blah, blah because i just invested which is the appropriate word for it in pat mcgrath and natasha denona i thought i should spend less money on the cheaper palettes and even though they're cheaper it still adds up if you buy several of them and I'm trying to make a little nest if you will for all those major launches like Denona's gold palette is coming up who knows what Pat's gonna come out with next she's coming out with a mascara that looks bomb so I'm trying to like spend more money on those items and less on these but I couldn't help myself with this so you have to forgive me I'm sorry also the packaging is recyclable and the eyeshadow is cruelty free here is a look inside I already did an eye look on it and of course I forgot to take a photograph of it I'm gonna do it again today I'm not sure if I'll do the same one I did yesterday or if I'll play with the greens uh, maybe I'll do one eye and then the other. We'll figure it out. I do appreciate that they have the names in the palette under the shadow pans. It doesn't have a mirror. And I thought maybe after Perception they would continue putting mirrors in all their palettes. It is like $2 more if they decide to do that. So I understand maybe they decided that it's not necessary each and every time. Like, we'll survive. Fine. Next up, we have the Crush On You Super Shock Highlighter Palette. This is fun because typically they're... Do I have one in here? No! People are really excited about this palette because typically their Super Shock Highlighter palettes come in these plastic compacts individually. It's a bouncy texture that requires them to stay covered or else they will dry out. Which was a concern amongst a lot of us because if they are encouraged to stay closed all the time, the nature of this palette is very much open closed several times. They worried if the texture would dry out out and ColourPop headquarters assured us that that will not happen so we shall see. This palette is $18. It's a little more expensive than the eyeshadow palette. Maybe because of the formula. This comes in so the, I love the packaging I'm sorry. This comes with four Super Shock highlighters. Just like the eyeshadow palette you have the names under the pans which is very helpful. No mirror. It's cool. This I believe, ah oh, there's no expiration date on this either. I'm going to soon 18 months as well. If I find anything uh, before while editing this footage I'll just put it up by me okay also made in the USA cruelty free what else what else what else each highlighter pan is at 4.2 grams or 0.15 ounces of product lastly we have the matte luxe lipstick this collection came with one two three six shades a lot of them were really beautiful they had like this matte magenta shade a vibrant orange shade which I peeped I did, but I decided to get the standout shade, which was this, let's see here, it's called JV. It's described to be a cool dark denim. So here is the packaging. This matte lipstick retails for $7. Again, also cruelty free and made in the USA. All packaging is recyclable. This is typically how all their matte lipstick units are designed with that rose gold metallic finish. Is it metallic high shine? 
super shiny i don't know and here you got it the lipstick bullet has the typical stars pressed into the actual lipstick just quickly swatch since we have it here now Ooh, that's a little so this is matte i just have i'm being very careful because these bullets tend to break very easily so that is the shade jv i'm pretty excited about it i've never well that's not true i've worn dark lipsticks not frequently but this shade is fun i actually did maybe it was i felt like it was like in another get ready with me i had like a really dark shade on it was from the fenty beauty um mademoiselle the little slim mini ones i think she has a color similar to that i don't know where it is friends it's somewhere deep in my drawers i'm sorry that i can't do a comparison swatch for you please forgive me before we get into the demo i'm sure you want to see some flatters so let's get started with that wild out is a metallic warm champagne hooky is a matte rich terracotta rookie is a burnt orange with blue glitter well that's pretty cool oh i see it I like that a lot. Sista is a matte, vibrant violet. Licious is a metallic yellow gold. Ooh, these two together. I can't take it. High Hopes is a matte, peachy, saddle brown. Reckless is a matte, rich maroon. Trooper is a matte, marigold. Hooked is a metallic, icy moss. Trophies is a matte, dusty purple. Ebb is a vibrant, metallic, olive vibrant vibrant sorry i think there's an error here flow which i just watched and seeing in the palette now on the website which i'm reading from is the matte black and olive brown i think trophies is the matte black and olive brown and this is the matte dusty purple because this doesn't look like blackened olive brown. Color pop, oops. Here are the swatches. I'm low key digging this color story, friends. And again, when I saw it, I was like, meh. Looking at the reviews, 19 reviews so far, not a whole lot, but all five stars are lit. And I think uh, our girl Christine from temptalia.com graded this, I think it was like an A minus or an A. Judging just from the texture, and again, I've, I've used some of the shades already. I'm gonna tell you right now, Trooper is is a little weak in terms of it standing up by itself. Yesterday I used this on my lid as like an all matte look and then I also used it to diffuse a hooky. And I think you can still incorporate it in that way and make something happen, but definitely don't expect for it to show up rich if you just use it as a standalone transition shade. All right, let's move on to Crush On You. Talk In Code is a pearlized soft silver. Poker Face is a pearlized soft pink with a gold sheen. Drop A Pin is a pearlized soft champagne gold. Class Act is a pearlized frosted peachy gold. It is really loud out there you guys you're killing me here are the swatches from crush on you with the super shock highlighter formula this is a really nice bouncy texture and of course i'm a total idiot and forgot to keep my cheekbones bare i apply just a little bit of highlight but not too much which speaks to how great this formula is because you can layer it over powder over bare skin over foundation it's not gonna lift anything off if makeup is there and it's gonna give you a really beautiful soft lit from a thin radiance that i truly love how these super shock highlighters achieve and i'm not gonna lie i know this is like open close and not as secure as their traditional design for their super shock highlighters but i like the the easy accessibility of just do going in with my fingers or with a beauty sponge which is what we'll do now i already have my complexion products on i will list all that i use down below in the description box and I think I want to go in with drop a pin. I used this yesterday. This is the soft champagne gold I'm gonna go in with a beauty sponge. You know what? I lied. I'm gonna go in my finger. Hold on. Wait, let me get you in a little closer Oh, my battery's already dying. Thanks a lot. Here is drop of a pin and typically they do recommend the best application is with a finger because it just beautifully melts the product into the skin. There you go, my friends. Whoa, ho, ho. I love that shade a lot. It's not too yellow and it's not too light. Hits it right in the middle. I think this is a beautiful undertone for my skin. Definitely looks like I could achieve this all by myself. And then I'll take a little bit of the class act. This is the 
the peachy gold I believe it said and I'm gonna put that more on my actual cheek area higher not exactly on that area but melt it in with the first shade we apply I'm taking my sponge and I'm just carefully buffing both shades together and there you go whoa of course they insist on parking the construction truck right in front of my window like they know when I'm filming they know I just want to film content without background noise is that too much to ask and like we'll get a microphone I'm currently using my iPhone as a microphone very helpful that Mel Thompson provided that info down below in her description box as to how she does her audio but i definitely will eventually get a dslr that has a mic jack because <sighs> this is this is a lot better than my previous videos and thank you guys for being very understanding in my situation just relying on my camera for audio sucked every time i filmed i could just hear the background noise i'm like oh my god this is a little better because since i have the phone right in front of me it's just capturing my voice and less background noise definitely could be better oh my god what is happening but you know baby steps all right that is from the crush on you super shock highlighter palette i I love the Super Shock Highlighter Formula. Again, best applied with fingers. I think that's how you're gonna get the most impact and the best blend. You like, you like. Just so you know, I am trying out the new Cover of X. Oh, that's not it. Just so you know, I'm trying out the new Cover of X Power Play Concealer. I'll film a video dedicated to this for review, uh, demo, and try-ons and all that stuff. But I did apply it to my Liz as an eye base. So we're kind of, this is like a review in a review. You know what I mean? Don't actually know how it's gonna act as an eyeshadow base, but we shall see. And with that said, you know what time it is. Okay, I don't know if I, you know, actually this dries down kind of matte. There is some stick to it. It kind of, it reminds me of the Too Faced uh, Born This Way Super Coverage Concealer in terms of how it dries down. So we'll see how it fares under eyeshadow. Going in first with High Hopes. Ooh, and High Hopes got a lot of dust. I punched in my brush way too hard, so that was kind of my fault. Now with my way number 16, I'm going to start patting that in to my crease i'm using very light strokes because this has just a little bit of tack and i want to make sure that on my first application there are no skips i'm gonna make sure i picked up the dust that i made i love how this is going on so far it is looking smooth there's no dragging no skipping i'm going in with another application to deepen this a little bit more and I like how we're able to do that. If we want to kick up the saturation, we can layer and it won't come out textured or powdery. I love this shade a lot. It's, I believe it said it's a peachy saddle brown and I like that there is some peachiness to it and it's not just brown. It adds a really pretty warmth to the crease. Same brush now with Trooper. Again, taking that on my 16 and using that to just blend out the edges of High Hopes. Just so you can see, I mean, it's not a deep marigold. It's, it's, I think, probably the weakest color in the palette. I appreciate, though, how I could use it to blend out, and it's not going to cover high hopes, but just give us that really pretty gradient. You can kind of see in here working this magic a very tiny bit. And the power play is working well so far as an eyeshadow base. All right. Well, I love how, I mean, it kind of works in its favor that trooper is a little weak i could you know brush it into my brow bone it's not going to turn it completely yellow looking good so far i love it now with hooky with my way number four i'm gonna punch that in first to get it on my outer v and then i'll go in with circular motions hooky as well has a lot of kickback in the pan but i just pick up what got kicked out and put it on my brush it was all right i think that shade is blending beautifully i'm just slowly starting to pull it out a little bit so it could melt into that first shade ever since i playing with the Safari palette from Natasha Denona, I've been patting in a lot. And I really love how that just gives me a little more control 
in terms of how I want my shadows to blend out. Keep in mind, you know, I'm not a makeup artist, I'm just a makeup enthusiast, and my blending has improved astronomically ever since I've just been doing eyeshadow every day and looking at different technique and just experimenting and finding out what works best i'm also placing this shade on my inner third oh what is this inner corner i don't know i don't know eye anatomy do that here as well and i'm just dragging it across to connect the two a little bit taking my first number wayne and blending those edges out i'm gonna add a little more hooky to this side i feel like any this always happens you see that like line of demarcation i always get it on this eye so that's why i really tried with very light pressure to just help diffuse it a little more the better thing i should be doing is getting a clean brush because this that one i just used has product on it still and i don't want to necessarily add more i just want to diffuse it taking my number 16 that's the first brush we use to kind of help make that happen all right that looks good so far now going in with reckless same way number four this was definitely the driest out of the mats the other ones were pretty smooth and again i just want to stamp that in to place the color first and then i'll just start to diffuse it and we're not getting any fallout friends so we're doing good take it on this side you're careful i love this combination of shadow because technically we could apply this to like that vibrant violet matte shade which again i'll just come back on here and do another look more get ready with me Yay! i think i went a little too high with that shade but i'm just slowly i'm gonna take another brush actually this is my number six i it doesn't look like i did but i did rubbed it on my towel and just want to carefully diffuse this a little bit more and i'm punching in more product all right i think this is looking great of course that looks crazy sorry one of these days i will figure out this eye all right this is done i i kind of okay okay hold on i'm sorry i'm getting ahead of myself i would love to go in with one of the metallic shades but i am dying to show you what i did yesterday using trooper the marigold shade safari has renewed my love of all matte looks we're not totally going all matte with this look because we are going to punch some metallic shadow under the lower lash line but i've been loving all matte on my lids and i think i'm going to do that but first i'm going to take a little bit of my power play concealer just a touch i didn't do this yesterday but i think i needed to to punch up the saturation of the matte marigold shade which is what we're going to do we're going to punch that right on the center but i want to carve out not so much carve out but place a little more concealer to the center of my lid not in a super precise way i want to give a brighter canvas for trooper to work on so it could show up very bright or bright ish and i'm diffusing the edges with my finger so it doesn't apply harshly on top of the other shadows okay so got we got that down good 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 now in with trooper with my luxie 239 i'm gonna pat that on the center of my lid and i love how that looks do you love how that looks it's not super marigold i'm gonna tell you right now i might need to search for my white ColourPop concealer that I purchased when they launched their foundations because I think that's just going to give us a brighter, even brighter canvas to work on to really make this shade pop. But I don't mind it. I love the muted color and I feel it gives the lid a beautiful brightening effect without the typical metallic shade. You know I love a metallic shade. But this is a great change and I did this yesterday and oh my god. I was like, I have to do this again for my peeps, man. I'm going to take my number six and slowly punch in over and also i'm gonna this is reckless by the way sorry for not mentioning before i'm gonna bring reckless that deep burgundy shade to the inner corner as well because i think that had too much of a space and i want it to look a little more cohesive i'm doing that same thing on this eye i'm gently just punching in not getting too crazy i could use a smaller brush but i insist on being difficult taking my luxie again and just back and forth diffusing the edges and finding that balance between defining shade and brightening lid shade to where i like it how do we like i love this combination man i think it's so pretty it looks a lot better in person because sitting in front of my window the light is taking away 
a lot of the marigold shade from my lids but listen i dig it i like it so we could stay within this color story but i want to try this shade i think we're all dying to see how oh i blew it on again i was supposed to do the tissue trick instead of blowing on your palettes gently press a tissue on top thank you for suggesting that i do that so i could protect my eyes from styes now with trophies with my nameless shader i want to start punching that in Ooh. i don't like how that looks what's happening there huh what's happening i'm telling you man the light brings out the truth of everything. You think it's good blended in real life, but you get in front of the camera and it's like, no, you suck actually. I'm carefully punching this in because I want the color to show up. Now I know we're all dying to see how this would fare as a crease shade, but I'll be more than happy to come back on here again and see how that works out. When I get to the edge here, this is, this is where I have to be careful because I don't want it to appear as a stripe of eyeshadow i want it to softly diffuse in with the top shade but i always find that i have to go in with my finger to help make that happen all right now we have hooked which is like that really pretty uh it's a soft shade it's not the strongest metallic in here which is why i want to go in with ebb taking down my sigma e30 i'm gonna punch that right in the center of trophies and it shows up pretty well without any Fix Plus help. I'm taking high hopes with my Luxie brush and I'm just carefully with very light pressure blending out the edge of trophies because I want it to appear a little more smooth and not so skip-like. I like, I like. Okay, so you saw how the all matte looks. I know you guys want to see or not you, I'm just blaming you guys. I want to see just a little bit of licious with my index finger and just pop it right at the base of my lashes. Just do a little bit of that and allow it to diffuse up into the matte shade. So it just offers a touch more brightness and light for my lid. So I don't want to necessarily apply it to the whole lid. Again, just popping it to the base and then using my finger to blend up. This is such a pretty shade, I love it. And I think it really brings out the gold, and I think it brings out the gold in the matte shade very well, actually. I think this look calls for some wing liner, so I'm gonna do that, apply mascara, and we'll be back for the lipstick. I used my Fenty Beauty Fly Liner for my wing, as well as my Too Faced Better Than Sex Waterproof. And I usually don't do this. If I do the wing, I don't do the, the lower lash line, but I apply the Marc Jacobs Gel Liner in Irony. It's like a deep slate gray, and I feel like it paired nicely with the um blackened olive shade. What do you guys think? How are we looking? It's very smoky, very smoky. But I love this, uh, I love the color store. I think this is a great mixture of purples olives browns i mean dare i say a very edited safari palette Ooh. here's how it's looking safari on the top good sport on the bottom i would say it's like not i mean maybe like if you take away this row yeah and you just look at the teals and the olives because good sport has the one olive shade it has two purple shades but the only purple shade is in here in the safari palette your fair amount of warms. I think they did a really nice job in terms of good sport that they didn't overload it with warm shade. You basically just have high hopes and hooky. So you can rely on this on your transition shade or you can rely on Sista for your transition shade. And it's not another brown, it's just different color altogether. You could be really creative with that. I think this I cannot wait to go into next. This is the one with blue glitter in it. I know it's let me see can we see it on camera it's very hard to see but i think that's such a neat color and i definitely will come back on here again to check it out and try it on and on in action let's get into the lipstick man i'm really excited to try this color out again be very careful with these lipstick bullets because if you apply it like this it's gonna break it's gonna break i'm actually gonna screw this lower because i don't trust it I'm trying to use the point of the lipstick to line. For it being this color, I think the formula is actually quite smooth. Usually dark colors tend to be drier, but this shade is actually quite smooth in texture. I have my concealer brush on standby. I don't have a liner for this shade, so any 
time you encounter some messages, use your eraser. What do we think of the color, friends? I like it. I think it's something new, something fun. Maybe I'll wear it later when I go out with my friend Elijah. It's her birthday today. Happy birthday, Elijah! Of course, when this uploads, it's not gonna be your birthday anymore, but it's okay. We'll just extend it to when this uploads and have a longer birthday. Yay! What do we think of the final look? How do you feel about the eyeshadows, the color of the matte lipstick? I think their matte lipstick formula is phenomenal. For $7, it feels smooth, it glides on. Of course, the one downfall is the bullets break easily from my experience. Just be careful that you don't apply the lipstick with it screwed all the way up. You gotta screw it down and just apply it when it's lower in the tube. As far as the eyeshadow palette, I really dig it. And I think it's actually finding for the top spot in all my color pal eyeshadow palettes in terms of my favorites. I have Perception here and I always have to look at them side by side because you kind of forget like what you love and what your favorites were. And Perception is phenomenal. This is a 16 pan palette as opposed to Good Sport being only 12 pans. But if we were to compare the color stories quickly, I'll put them right up against each other. So this is the color story that we're dealing with. Of course, Perception has a lot more to offer. When I compare this to Born to Run from Urban Decay, this is like a more edited version of that color story. But you know, this is Shayla's palette, so she wanted her favorites in here as well as uh, colors, pops of colors that she loves to include in her eye creations. I don't know, man. This speaks to me in a way that it's like, I dig it and I'm a sucker. You know I'm a sucker for yellows and purple. Anything orange, purple, like warm with purple. That combination across the board I love. And that you have this beautiful metallic green, but then you have this, this isn't just any gold like this is a full bodied multi-dimension gold i just love the tone of it it's so bright and when you apply this on your lid it's just like Poof. and i applied this on my lower lash line yesterday and the reflect and the shine that was radiating from under my lashes was gorgeous. Oh, you know what? Let's do it now. I forgot to put something on my inner corner. We'll go in with Wild Out. I'll use my pinky just to punch that in. And I love this shade. This isn't your typical like champagne shade. It has a little bit of... It looks like there's like some pink in there. I know I read the description earlier while we were doing the squat, the squatches. The swatches, I totally forgot what I read, I'm sorry. But I think this is a beautiful color to apply to the inner corner. That's better. And you got your purples and you got your burgundy. I would, you know, if you don't love to use burgundy as a defining shade, that's probably gonna be a problem for you in using this palette. I don't mind it though. If I really had an issue with it, I would just dip out and use another palette or just have uh, maybe one of my Marc Jacobs singles on standby for that definition. I particularly love High Hopes as a transition shade. I know it's your typical warm, but like, let's see, if I were to swatch it next to Culture from Perception, this is Culture, and this is High Hopes from Good Sport. High Hopes has a lot more depth to it, and I think it'll just show up better on, on my skin tone. And of course, you know, you, it's not the only transition you have. You have your... She got thick in here and revenge, but like Shayla loves orange, so she had to put an orange in there. Like, I get it. I like this color too. This is like a really pretty terracotta, like a rich one. I don't, you know, I love it. I love this palette. I would highly recommend it. If you don't have any ColourPop palettes, it's so hard to say because, oh my God, I have so many. I should just do like uh, ColourPop decluttering because I actually was looking through my drawers yesterday to clean it out with some stuff I still had in there that I had to get rid of. And there's like, I think I love you. There's the yes, please. There is give it to me straight. I mean, there are so many, but I feel a lot of those color stories are just like they revolve around one look. Whereas I feel you could create some nice looks with this palette and it not just be warm brown. If you wanted to place this all over your lid and do like a nice all over olive smoke and apply hook to the center, I think that will be gorgeous. If you want it to just be exclusively purple, you could just rely on Sista and Flow, Sista Flow, to achieve that for you. If you just want the regular brown, you got the regular brown. You have this shade to put on your lid if you just want to keep it champagne and simple or you want to go wild with Ebb. I'm a fan of this palette. Is it the same quality as Pat? 
absolutely not. Does it have that high shine sparkle toppers that she got in Mothership? No, but it is $16. If it's not in your budget to purchase something from Pat McGrath, from Natasha Denona, even from Makeup Forever, like a uh, not as expensive as those brands, but still expensive, I think ColourPop is a great way to go. And especially this palette. I didn't use it extensively. Again, I didn't use all the matte shades and I'll be more than happy again to come on here and just do multiple looks, but I love it. I really like this palette. Maybe I will change my mind, but as of now, using it yesterday and today, Again, I just really love the color story. I love the shadows. I think they perform well for the money. You can't beat it. And again, I think this is a little more comprehensive than their previous eyeshadow palettes in terms of the different looks you can come up with. I'm rambling, rambling about the eyeshadow palette, not giving crush on you any love. I think this is great. If you have not experienced any of their Super Shock Highlighter individuals, I think this is a great opportunity to get the palette because then you'll have an array of colors. You don't have to carry around multiples of the plastic pots if you want to use more than one color because I do love to layer these and this setup just lends that opportunity to do so. Drop a pin I think it's a great shade and you have a course you have like the lit from a thin glow you got that extra bing from the middle if you want to add another color you could do more pink if you want to go more rosy you could use this on the cheeks i did see jay kissa's review on this collection and she was very underwhelmed with the highlighter color selection selection it would have been cool if maybe they included a dual chrome green shade just to kind of align with the olive and metallic green shades they got in the eyeshadow palette i think that would have been really great and you could pop that on on your cheekbone if you're not about that life and you just don't have an opportunity to do that you could pop on the theoretical green highlight on the lid or even onto the inner corner or even to the lower lash line because these are all like this the same ish i know they're different undertones and clearly if i angle it this way they all look like different colors but i felt because of the eyeshadow palette and the color story that it gave there was just so much more opportunity to achieve that in the super shock highlighter palette let me know down below if you think so too or not because there are so many super shock highlighter shades that kind of look the same and man if they would have maybe did one out there color that wasn't your typical champagne rosy soft pink hue but maybe something that kind of matched another crazy color from the eyeshadow palette even if it was like a violet dual chrome something something that would have been really cool it's all good color pop you know you got time you're always pumping out new products like every freaking week probably see it eventually don't know if i'm gonna do designer disney I did see the palette. It looks gorgeous. It, it's not really for the shades, friends. The shades are, I mean, they're neutral. There's some like peachy shades in there that look kind of cool for the most part. If I do get the palette, it's just for the packaging and seeing all the Disney princesses dress in like New York Fashion Week style attire. Maybe I'll get that one super shock shadow that could look beautiful with Soul from the Norvina palette. Like maybe that's the color I need to pump up Soul and just wear that all over my eyes. That's an option. I don't know. We'll see. I'm always on the fence. You know how I would love to buy new makeup, but I'm trying to buckle down and make reasonable decisions and just spend my money on high quality like bomb makeup i am thinking about getting the desi and katie dose of colors collab friendcation palette and that my friends is a wrap thank you all so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and until then i'll see you on here again with another demo tutorial get ready with me or review take care and i'll see you again soon